Good evening and welcome to the third episode of A Closer Talk. If you don't know me yet, I'm Betty van Langendonk and I will be your host tonight. In this third episode of our interview series, we invited Roel van Hoek. He's the deputy director of music at Bozar, the art center in Brussels. Bozar is also the venue where Brussels Jazz Orchestra had, it had its last live performance before COVID-19 happened. It was a fantastic double bill with the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. Where where Rule was also. Good evening, Rule. Good evening. Good, Good to hear, hear from you. How are and you tonight? I'm fine. I'm fine. And, and uh, first of all, thank you very much for this invitation uh, to get part in this series. You're welcome. We're uh, very excited to have you tonight. <laughs> so we know you as the deputy director of music at Beaux-Arts, but let's go back to when you graduated and started working. What did you do before you ended up at Bozar? Um, well, that's a good that's a good question. Um, mm -hmm. I well, first first of all, um, I I my studies I was a bit focusing on um, I've studied law, so mm -hmm. which which means that uh, everything I say you have to be very uh, suspicious specific about but it's not me it's it's because of the study and the second part is i've studied music um and i was i really loved it i studied jazz um and i really really loved um going into the music sector um and i had the opportunity first to uh be invited to work at the, which was then the flanders music center which is now uh, let's say a bit, bit has become the uh, the arts point arts uh, point in in Flanders, and there mm -hmm. is um, the Poppins, uh, which has been divided. Which basically was an organization that supports uh, professional uh, music sector in in uh, in Flanders, and I was responsible for first of all to, for. Um, Teaching is not the right word, but to develop a more business approach, let's put it this way, for young professional musicians. We had a special grant and I was, uh, my salary was paid by that. Okay, uh, interesting. Uh, <laughs> special grant. So I worked there for, for three years and it was really interesting to um, promote um, the fact that um, uh, also young musicians, young professional musicians should be aware of the business side of things. Um, the legal standpoint, but also the economic uh, standpoint, the social uh, uh, standpoint, and which was really also very interesting for me because I went to a lot of conservatories, um, give, giving some 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 classes, and it was really interesting to see that um, sometimes it was really a, an eye opener for young musicians back then. I'm talking about now you know, yeah. more than 15 years ago. What were the what were the things that they were most surprised about that they really didn't know? Well, it's it's. I mean, first of all, the education uh, at conservatory level, if you, if uh, on 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 a, on a music level, it was only focused in terms of getting to play your instrument as well as you could. Uh, I'm exaggerating now. I don't want to. <laughs> if, if, if there are people listening. Um, uh, apparently, you can ask questions, so you can also uh, make irritating <laughs> remarks about what I said. Uh, but but it was that was the main focus, and that was the conscience of many young musicians mm -hmm. um, uh, back then. They wanted to play as good as possible, and that was the focus for five years. But what are they going to do with it? I mean, are they aware that uh, playing uh, for classical musicians in an orchestra it's hard? I mean, it's 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 there is a lot of international competition about yeah. it. Are they aware that a lot of them, most of them, is, are going to teach, and and at what level they're going to teach, and what they want, to, what is their aim with with the teaching? Uh, are they aware that if they want to have an independent music career, that in, uh, that there are a zillion different uh, legal structures that you can uh, develop in how how doing that? And so that 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 side of of, of which is well, that side of of, of 
of uh, also developing, which is so important to develop your music career. That was really, really uh, at that time, really something that was not uh, looked at at the conservatories back then. I think yeah. a lot of has, has changed uh, now. So I, I won't. But I'm talking about. So that that's the first thing that I did is 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 going around and talk with a lot of young prosperous musicians, which yeah. have become now really um, famous musicians uh, uh, amongst. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, some of them uh, and that I did for three and a half years and then I had uh, after that I, I had the opportunity to uh, become the general manager of which was back then uh, uh, Jeunesse Musicale of Flanders Youth and Musique Flanders which was um, the, the in, in the time the largest music education organization uh, in the country uh, we organized a lot of uh, school music projects, so we produced uh, projects, artistic projects that were aimed at going to schools. Okay. Um, we had some uh, symphonic youth orchestras that were uh, managed. We had uh, a youth comp music competition. That kind of um, that kind of work it was really, really super interesting. It was not. It was not easy work because it, it it had a lot of history and unfortunately the organization doesn't exist uh, anymore for for a few years now. But it was so interesting and so inspiring to to work with um, the education aspect of of the music industry. Uh, yeah. Back. And then five no almost six years ago now I had the opportunity to start at Bazaar. So that is more or less my my career until now. Okay, so both jobs, your first jobs actually, were most of the time working with young people and working on educational projects. More or less, yes. Uh, but yes, you the music, absolutely. That was really the focus was as um, was uh, youth, but also a youth that doesn't actively play, but wanted to yeah. present and be a sort of billboard for um, music artistic quality mm -hmm. um with, with the flanders music center the, the 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 things that i the, the range of activities were a bit wider on that as well we worked a lot back then which was really interesting well in organizing the music sector as well to get it more organized because as we see now i mean we know now for example how important um uh, an effective lobbying is in terms of of, of resources in terms of Mm -hmm. of um of um, institutional relations and all of that and back then uh, and i'm talking once again uh, uh 15 years ago uh we really developed in in getting the the the, the music sector uh, uh, better organized so we had more uh organizations on a sector level that could really have um, and that could really de develop a strong and um, uh, more uh, um, one I that could speak in, in more in one voice towards uh, the government, for example. So that that yeah. were things that that we did back then, which was super interesting for me. Yeah, I assume that that experience also helps you today in your job at Boza, because there I said it before, you're the deputy director of music. For the people who don't really know what that means. Could you tell us <laughs> what you do at Bozar exactly? Well, well, basically, I mean, Bozar is, it's, it's, Bozar is a fantastic uh, center to work with because we, I mean, we, we present ourselves as a, a, a European uh, um, hub for cultural exchange, a, a very short. It's so that, so that means that we, uh, we produce and we present uh, artistic projects, very diverse, all kinds of uh, uh, genres, uh, in in order to to um, promote the, the European idea, in order to uh, make culture relevant on a European level, in order to to make it uh, relevant as as possible for the city of Brussels, which we work in. So it's a really diverse and very center and music department where I, I work with is, is, is just a part, uh, it's a large part, but it's just a part of that whole um, uh, idea. And um, I'm, as a deputy, I'm responsible for, let's say, the, the non-classical uh, uh, music program 
uh, of the central, but I'm always doing this or this when I, when I say it, because it's, I mean, it's the, I don't want to talk too much about genres. Uh, in fact, you notice more and more, um, that, uh, you, you, you want to, first of all, you, you're not responsible for a genre within a program, but you want to tell a story, uh, um, as a programmer, but also as a programmer within the vision of, of uh, an art center that you work in. So um, that's what we do actually, is telling a story through music. And that to me is, is really uh, very fascinating um, to do and to, to fascinating to do it in, a, in an, the biggest art center in Belgium like Bozar. Yeah. So Bozar really is a big art center because besides going to concerts, you can watch a theater performance or watch a mu movie or uh, attend an exhibition and so on. So how do you make the music stand out or how does it fit in that diverse uh, range of activities? It doesn't need to be standing out. It just, um, it's, it's part of the, um, of, of the, the, the bigger story that we want to, um, present as, as the house. And it is quite a challenge. It's, mm -hmm. it's not simple, uh, but, um, but I always, when I talk with artists also, I, the first thing I, I say to artists is I want to hear your story, but please, can you listen to my story as well? And my story is not my personal story, but is is to the story that we want to uh, represent as Bozar. What do we do, do, do? What is our vision? Mm -hmm. uh, we, I think in, in, in comparison to other halls, we work a bit more conceptual. We work a lot on teams. We have narratives. Uh, we work as lot as possible within, um, uh, 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 a multidisciplinary, uh, context and to develop a music program, which fits in it. It's not that simple. It's sometimes quite hard because, um, uh, it's, it's the, the eternal uh, discussion between music for music or music, uh, around, uh, themes or con conceptual, uh, music. Um, well, we, we're a bit in between, uh, sometimes, but the, 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 the between that, that vision of Bozar, we try to, to develop a music program that and is the highest artistic quality. And at the same time, we want to, um, uh, uh bring, uh, to, to big, uh, to be part of, of a larger team, uh, yeah. be conceptual, have something to say. Um, so that is what we do. And that is a challenge. What we as, as, as an I, individual between that large entity, uh, has to be a part of, part of that story. Yeah. And so you're talking about telling a story as a music, uh, director, but say you're choosing the music for the new season. Do you have a story in mind when you're choosing the artists? Oh, but we, yeah, of course we have a, I mean, I have, I, I sometimes say, um, well, you have to be good if I just program you without <laughs> the, a story that I, I am always looking for the story to tell. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course the, 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 the story can develop in, and I, that's, that's the way that I prefer in developing in, in, um, in discussion, in exchange with an artist, of course, you, 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 you talk and you see something new developing and that the artists after, 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 um, a coffee, one hour, the artist can go home and you see on his face, yeah, that's a good idea. And I say, oh yeah, that, that's something I really, if we could do that, that, that would be awesome. And then you see something developing, uh, 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 new, but it is absolutely true that the European idea that, uh, the idea of, of themes and uh, next year we're focusing on, uh, uh, we have a team arts and well-being. So we're, we're okay. trying to, to, to search for projects that aim, that have that aim. We focus around, um, European presidencies. We have, um, the focus of, of Ali, we, we, we were, we really try to have uh, an, an, a good relation and, and be relevant within the city of Brussels with the communities uh, in Brussels. So those are always f focuses that for me are very important and that um, are complementary with just sitting back, listening and say, 
yes, this is really, really good music. But the second thought is, and uh, what can I tell with this music? Uh, yeah. That's what that's what I'm, for example, always looking are, are looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you always have a story in mind, which could also develop in dialogue in dialogue with the musician. Absolutely, that's, and that's what yeah. I prefer to be honest. Because if if it's a shared dialogue, if if the artist uh, identifies itself with the with the, the the concept and the theme. Mm -hmm. um, that's really the most important thing. I mean, it's the artist that presents. We just provide, let's say, a platform. We try to sometimes to be um, uh, have a, a sometimes a framework uh, as well. But it's the artist that really has to identify with the story and with with the narrative and with the message and with the that's that's the crucial part, of course. Yes. And how do you find those musicians? How do you stay on top? of the trends in music that's a very good question um and that's a very difficult question um well i'm gonna be honest i'm i'm not a programmer that every week checks all the latest uh album releases for example mm -hmm. um i just don't work that way um i the, the, i mean that's perhaps what we differentiate with with uh, with other halls that are uh, a little more on on let's say follow the the recent trends. We take perhaps a little bit more distance. Uh, of course, I mean I read I we we have I, uh, I read uh, uh, the the jazz magazines for example or or other magazines uh, song lines for world music. It's super interesting. So. I, I use it more as an inspiration to to look for those once again for those projects that you say oh here we as Bozar can do something uh, uh, with it so uh, and and for the rest of course you, you follow the the, the blogs if you um, you read the magazines you check some you, you read the reviews um, and but that's more to me like I say as a sort of background as a sort of um, uh, uh, a sort of baggage that you have that you can use perhaps two months later when something comes up and they say, I've mm -hmm. read something about it. And that's the yeah. difference, uh, more or less. It's it's really hard. It's really seldom that I read, uh, that I hear uh, an album and that the first thing I want to do is call the agent and I say, I want this. It's okay. it's, yeah. it's something that, that we, 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 we take a little bit of distance, try to absorb and see what we can do in a larger narrative. That's what we try to do yeah yeah so it's a process that you have to go through before you decide who will be on the program yeah yeah and it and it and it can, sometimes can take a while i mean sometimes uh, what i love to do and the uh, recent months it's it it uh, was very difficult of course it's just inviting um a musician or musicians uh, for a coffee and we just talk without no agenda and it is very probable that nothing specific come, uh, comes out. And then four months later, you get a phone and say, Rule, you remember our conversation? Yeah, I thought mm -hmm. about it. And what do you think about this? And I said, this is really uh, something interesting. So it, it sometimes yeah, can right. takes a, uh, takes a lot of time. It, you, it's, it's like seeding always ideas mm -hmm. and, and exchanging ideas. And sometimes it's, I, 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 I can, I, I've heard somebody saying, somebody talk me about that. And then, then you see and they say, oh yeah, that one. And then, then you develop something together. And that is fantastic. Yeah, I can believe that. So say that it's a very busy period at Bozar. You're having one concert after the other. How much do you want to listen to music again when you come home or you're driving in your car? <laughs> That's a good question. Well, I go to the train. Um, I live in Antwerp. And Bozar is in Brussels. This, so um, recently we we uh, we. We worked at home, of course, uh, which was yeah. actually uh, some somewhat easier to listen to music because it's not always uh, uh, easy to listen to the music at the desk in the office. But what I usually do is, is um, uh, for example, if, if there are new releases, then put it on the iPhone and then listening on them on the train. 
uh, I love I love listening to music on the train. I don't know why, but it it just calms me down. It's it's also a moment that I don't read or I just can listen to the to music. Yeah. To the train. So the train in the morning and the train in the evening are really for me listening moments, um, uh, which which really re really um, help me. Um, for me, to be honest, the the most important reference remains a live concert. It is very seldom that only my I um, I will book something on a record for for one reason why I don't know. But I if I see something live, even if they don't have a record, I'm I I can be uh, persuaded to book it because it, it's the live performance what we produce. So if yeah. the live performance that I've seen is uh, has some fantastic quality, then I'm then I can book it and am I uh, then uh, sometimes the our communication manager uh, shoots me and say yeah but well, there is no album to tell and say oh, sorry but it's it's so the live performance for me that is what I do I, I I love and I do a lot going to see musicians live 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 that far yeah. more than than listening a lot to albums albums yeah okay <laughs> so Earlier in our conversation, you mentioned that you study jazz and that you really love it and you have a fascination for it. Where could you describe that fascination? Why is jazz so interesting to you to talk about a genre anyway now? Well, it's it's it, it, it happened. Um, well, first of all, I studied at a secondary level uh, saxophone. So at the, at the amateur music school uh, around, and the reason that I I, I began uh, playing at twelve or thirteen, I'm not sure, must be something else. And the reason was very simple. There was a fantastic Dutch lady called Candy Dulfer who played saxophone, which uh, at that time I think um, uh, I was really my hormones go up. I saw <laughs> Candy Dolfer playing. I said, I have to play the saxophone. So I, I played the saxophone. I started playing and I really liked it. Um, and then Candy Dolfer al always played. Yeah, my, one of my heroes is Maceo Parker. So I started to listen to uh, um, um, music of Maceo Parker. Uh, and then um, with together with um, my friend Nicolas Rombaut, who is uh, uh, a famous uh, bass player and producer um, in Flanders, uh, we once decided when we were 18 years old to go to the North Sea Jazz Festival, which was back then mm -hmm. in The Hague. And we booked a hotel in Delft, I remember that, which was like 20 minutes a ride uh, from uh, The Hague. I don't know why we came up there, but we went three days uh, to um, uh, the festival which is, I mean, it has a broad range of jazz performance, really more like soul, pop to really avant-garde. It, it has it all, uh, yeah. uh, actually, back then uh, as well. And I know that we went to see um, names like uh, George Clinton, Jamiroquai, Maceo, uh, G. Love and the Special Sauce. That were the names mm -hmm. that we knew back then. But there were some holes in between. So we checked and, and uh, I never forget because that really was an important moment for me that uh, there was a, a on the rooftop if I uh, back then, it was a name of James Carter James Carter the saxophone uh, player who was then I'm speaking of 95 or 96 was then just at, at the start of his career but he was really then I mean as a saxophone player he was blowing everybody away and he came up and he had his African suit and I was already what is this and then he played and um, for, for those people who are not uh, familiar with the music of James Carter really listen to uh, the album GC on the set because the first tune that he plays he I mean with his embouchure he does things on a saxophone that back then I just didn't know not that it was possible I just didn't know that it existed and I really know <laughs> that um that concert, particular concert, it was with Craig Tabor on, on the piano, who, who played back then with us. So it was a, 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 a Sharibu Shahi, Tani Tabal, it was a fantastic quartet. And after that, I said, wow, what is this? Um, and then it all started. I mean, I, I, bought, I bought a CD immediately of, of uh, James Carter. 
uh, and I know it was Caravan on on that, and I uh, Caravan. Okay, who played Caravan? And then uh, I saw that Caravan was played by Winter Marsalis, and I know, and then I learned Bradford Marsalis, who I became really a big fan of, and that's and that's how it started uh, more and yeah. more. And then and my playing, of course, and I wanted, and then I started playing two three hours every day because I wanted to be as good as all those all those guys. So it's it's. It's yeah. It's a bit stepping stone from Candy Dilfer to uh, to uh, James Carter, in fact. Okay, great. So you you mentioned uh, Winton Marsalis, which you met now to your job at Bazaar. How was it meeting him? Oh, it was fantastic. I mean, uh, it was the second time now that um, that he came to Bazaar. The first the first time was for. Uh, 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 two days residency, and now the last time, which you, which the orchestra participated, with three days. So we had a lot of time to, to discuss, and and he came to the jam session at the the Victor Cafe um, yeah. at night, which was really incredible. I know I was I was so um, so enthusiastic because I really we organized the jam session just of course that he should show up, <laughs> and and in the in the noon and we talked and we we had lunch together, um, and. Um, and you and he went and uh, and I said yeah the, you know there's a chance said, yeah, yeah yeah gonna be there gonna be there and I, and I know he left and I said yes he's, he's he's gonna be there so he was so generous he um he talks um he's really passionate um uh and and artistically so constructive I mean it's it was so rare to have a superstar that is open to ideas in developing. Uh, a project. If you talk about empathy towards a whole, if you talk about someone who is not um, uh, backing away for an artistic challenge, to me it was uh, Winter Marsalis and the Jazz at Lincoln Center, all the organization, in fact, because they were so open to us yeah. and so willing to discuss and develop a program together. And that's why we had three fantastic days at Bozar in uh, February. It seems like a long time ago, but yeah, it's, I know. <laughs> perhaps it is, but it was fantastic, really fantastic. Okay. Um, before we go to the last question, I just wanted to say to the people who are watching now, if you have any questions for Rule, just post them in the comments and we'll take a look at them in a minute. So I have to talk about it, uh, COVID-19. How did you experience the last few months? Um, it's... it's uh getting more and more difficult and it's it's um getting more and more difficult because it's getting it's it's um well first of all i mean we in 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 um we had chikoria planned the 11th of march uh, at all so it was the first concert that we had to cancel uh, due to the the covid 19 and i know i did everything um we could in short notice to um to have a new date and I, I know I was so uh, happy that we could announce the concert in November yeah because back then it was we just had no idea that it's that it's gonna last so so long um and then weeks develop months develop now and you see I mean it's it's um summer at at, at the uh, certain period um summer uh was uncertain and now Okay, we can do some small things, but uh, most uh, the the large majority of the summer program is autumn is very un uncertain. So um, it's it's hard, but it's not hard in in mainly for us, but it's hard for the entire sector. And I yeah. really believe that we as as uh, a center should uh, be on the forefront to defend uh first of all the the interest of the artists uh culture as such the role of culture uh, as such um and and see what that we have sufficient support but not all, only support but uh, sufficient prospects in a large scale and that that the sector must have um and the cultural sector and culture in general must have uh once again perspective to develop we're too important um just to put um on a side uh, and say yeah just wait until everything is is yeah. safe we 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 have the the right to 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 
ask, for example, okay, a plane can go up with 200 people very uh, near, uh, very uh, side by side. Why is that possible? Why some things in the cultural sector are not possible? I think we have absolutely the right to ask uh, some questions and to, to defend um, the, the role and the importance of arts and music uh, because it is important yeah. and it should be uh, getting the support of not only the government but everybody who every stakeholder that uh, is, is uh, um, has some interest in it and the longer it takes the mentally the harder it gets and uh, there are so many people that are suffering um, so many artists that really 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 needs uh, support as well and i think it's our respons responsibility to be on the forefront in defending uh, those interests yeah i agree with the uh, grand importance of <laughs> yeah, culture we should. i mean we should um, yeah there is one question here that i see from mika uh, she asked if you still play the saxophone that's a very annoying question um, <laughs> because the reason was when COVID uh, started. I I thought now I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, yeah. play again. I did it for two weeks. The, the problem with the saxophone is it's such a physical instrument, and the embouchure needs really some maintenance. I mean, it's it's yeah. for every horn player. If you don't play uh, some time, you sound terrible. It's really, you sound so terrible and it's so, um, un, I mean, you really have to get over it. And before yeah. you have, you have your uh, so, sort of, once again, uh, um, uh, that you're satisfied with your sound. So the, the short question is, I try, but uh, I have to try harder. <laughs> okay, thank you. I don't think there are any more questions. So we can go to your favorite BGO track, which you've chosen for us. Could you tell us a little bit more about your choice? I, I um, chose Portrait of Jenny, which uh, the recording you're going to see is from a later date. Now I haven't the date, it's, it's I think 10 years later than the, um, the uh, original recording, which uh, I think it's 2002 on Naked in the Cosmos. It's yeah, by, album, yeah. Yeah, by Kenny Werner. Uh, the arrangement it's a it's a standard which features frank it's not really typical for the for the bgo repertoire as a whole because it's a jazz standard it's not, it's kenny werner who uh, uh arranged but i chose it because it was in 2002 and it was the the, the period uh, back then when i studied at, at conservatory and i know and um it's it was the same with the previous album i think it was the album before one or two before with the double album of Bertioris, the music of Bertioris, which as a student personally, but I can say for all students, we listen to it a thousand time, times to that, um, those uh, albums. <laughs> uh, and when Naked in the Cosmos came out, it was so, it was um, really different of, of, the, of the, uh, the, the album with Bert, uh, the first uh, track Naked in the Cosmos, it's, it's like so wild. Um, and then the the the, the track the portrait of Jenny, which features Frank, uh, which was for us uh, such an example. And all of a sudden, we started at all uh, jam sessions. We started to play uh, the bell the ballad because <laughs> we wanted to play uh, like Frank uh, 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 did. So for me, it's it's first of all, it's it's a beautiful arrangement. It Frank plays beautiful on it. His solo is is. Um, amazing and it's a lot of nostalgia in, involved because the the track on the album I've listened at least hundreds of hundreds uh, of times. Wow okay <laughs> okay br before we going to listen to the portrait of Jenny I would like to thank you Wool, for being with us tonight. It's a pleasure. It was uh, very uh, interesting thank and you. I hope we really yeah. soon get the orchestra back on uh, that the orchestra back is on uh, stage, uh, the sooner yeah. the better. Whether it's at Bozar, it's another hall. We uh, we should ever we should try to get it uh, done. Yeah, thank you. We hope uh, <laughs> the same. <laughs> uh, thank you also everyone who watched tonight. Keep an eye on our social media for new uh, live sessions. Thanks again, Rul. And here's your nostalgic moment with Portrait of Jenny. Perfect. Bye. Bye.